Hey, good morning, Wellhouse Church. I'm excited to be with you again for another week. I'm excited to be dedicating ourselves to the teachings, looking and empowering women the way that God meant to. So why don't you come join me for our story this morning? I'm excited uh, for these two wonderful ladies that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at two ladies named Yudia and Syntyche, and we don't know a lot about them. We know a grand total of like three sentences about them. And Paul mentions them in his letter to the Philippians. A very friendship, affirming, encouraging kind of letter. And the letter is good. It's just positive after positive after positive, time and time and time again, until you get to this moment. This moment in chapter 4 is where the tone of Paul's letter begins to change a little bit. And here's what he says. I urge Eudia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. So there's a couple things that should jump out at you off the page. Number one, Paul is writing a letter to a church. So for him to step out and specifically name two individual people tells us that they're pretty important. They're well known in the church and they're pretty important with what's, with what's happening in the church congregation. The second thing is that he names them as co-workers, as those who have struggled alongside him in the work of the gospel. And so what does that mean? It means that they're equal. It's right there with Clement and the rest of the other male workers. Like, it's it's right there in the same vein that the men and the women are doing the same gospel work. They, they struggled side by side with one another. There was no difference in gender based on the work that was being done. Men weren't doing one thing and women doing the other. Paul just says, but they've struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers. All of it is this conglomeration, this, this team of people, regardless of gender. Gender is not the determining factor here about how you go about doing the work of the Lord. But here's the thing that I think is interesting. This entire letter, Paul's been encouraging them, talking about their love for one another, that his love, their love for him. There are so many good things in this letter. And then Paul just decides, hey, I'm going to talk to Yudia and Syntyche for a minute. He says, I urge Yudia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. To agree, to find a way to come to terms with the fact that uh, we need to be in agreement. We need to be in unity. I happen to think, I don't have proof of this, uh, and I don't know, but I happen to think that this conflict is church-related. Philippi is a pretty wealthy city. I think this church probably has a little bit of wealth to it, especially since they continue to send gifts to Paul financial gifts. Um, and so I think this is a pretty wealthy church. I think it's a pretty prominent church. Um, and so when Paul is talking to them, he says, I urge you to be of the same mind. I think it's church related. And this really strikes me because of all the things he could have said to church leaders, which I believe Yudi and Syntyche are, to be of the same mind doesn't seem like the thing that I would go for. That's not the place where I would put my money. You know what I mean? It's, if I were talking to a church leader, I'd probably give them like some practical tips like, hey, do this. Hey, when you talk to people, say this. Like, I, I don't know that my natural thing would be to tell somebody to be of the same mind. But I think the reason that Paul is saying that is because being of the same mind, being in unity, reflects the love of God. 
the love that we've received from God, we're supposed to be a conduit of to those around us. As we like to say at Wellhouse, the love of God should be experienced through the people of God. And apparently Paul is concerned that whatever conflict or discord is happening between Judea and Syntyche no longer reflects the love and grace of Jesus. And so what do we do with that? We tell ourselves, we urge our own selves to heed Paul's words, and we strive to be of the same mind. Now, unity is not uniformity. You don't have to look like me, smell like me, talk like me. That's not the goal here. The goal here is that all people are welcome to feel loved at this table at Wellhouse Church. That is, for me, being of the same mind. This is not a place of judgment or chastisement or any of those kinds of things. This is a place where we experience love. This is a place where we participate in God and the love of God. And so it is, I think, vital, as Paul has pointed out, that we do be of the same mind. And we can learn from these women. These women are out doing magnificent work alongside Paul. And sometimes in doing that, it's easy to lose sight of things or it's easy to overlook the things that we're doing to those that are close to us. But today I want us all to take a minute and really seek and strive to be of the same mind. What does it mean to be of the same mind for us at Wallace Church? What does it mean for us to be unified and working together? In the words of Rachel Held Evans, uh, the gospel is not offensive because of who it keeps out, but because of who it lets in. It's this experience of unconditional love and fellowship that we've received from God and we're a conduit of to those around us. So what does it look like for all of us to be, on this, to be of the same mind and, and working towards the same goal, the same end of the vision of Wallhouse to be a place where people can be real?